Many existing subscribers on my channel, you'll know that I've recently been building my first startup. Now, firstly, if you've, if you've been watching my channel recently, you'll know that I've been working within a big monolith of GoCode, right? Uh, so my, my live stream recently done that. Now, that monolith uses hexagonal architecture and domain driven design. So I've got bounded context, which straight away means if I ever need to scale up this monolith uh, and actually separate it out, each of these services within the Go monolith at the moment are self contained. So if I ever need to pull out this account service and have that, you know, oh, that's not joined, but and have that over here away from the monolith and fire off an event over there and have its own database, the code is actually already set up to do that, which is really nice, right? I can just take out that service, put it into a Docker container, Dockerize that one service, um, and we'll be good to go, right? Uh, so that's why you'll notice on this diagram here that each one of these services get their own migrations and that way, like I was saying, each one is, is already, the application is written in a way that it, it is ready to accept its own database for each service, which if you know microservices is the whole point of microservices, right? You want high available microservices, they're self-contained. So if the recruiter service goes down, then the account service can still work. Or if the engineer service goes down, the other two can still work and, and vice versa. So obviously this being a startup, I don't need to be i don't i'm not going to expect a lot of traffic at the moment right i don't need multiple services running self-contained i don't need multiple postgres instances mainly because there's a cost that it comes with that like a, a genuine actual cost a monetary cost because i'll have to pay for multiple you know postgres instances things like that uh, the server might need more capacity because it needs to run different services so my approach at the moment is this will run as a single binary now that's great for me, right? That means I can have a single Postgres instance. Each service can just apply its own migrations into that one database, and it can all work from a single database. And that also means, from a code perspective, I just have this one HTTP layer, which all of these services can be directly imported into via Go, right? Which means this HTTP layer can expose a UI directly with the likes of HTMX. So if you've been watching my recent videos, you'll know I've been building a lot of the UI for this application with HDMX. And it also means if I ever need further integrations, I can already expose a JSON API purely based on the fact that I already have a HTTP layer. I already have this core service. So it's just going to be as simple as plugging in these service methods directly into a JSON API endpoint or a UI endpoint, or for whatever reason, if I want a CLI application, I just have another layer out here, which just imports these services again into it, right? Um, which is great. Obviously, again, if this, this ever needs to be split out, each one of these services would need its own HTTP layer. But the nice thing about having a core of your application is you can pass it to these what are known as adapters, like HTTP transport layers. And it's not a lot of work to just plug in, uh, to write those endpoints out and plug in the service calls, right? So that's kind of why this core is separate, obviously, from your HTTP layer. It's also why there's obviously a data layer. So like the, post, po the Postgres repos down here, would be the data layer. Um, so these are all separated as well. So if I ever need to swap out the data layer to Mongo, because I decide that I can get better value from a document-based database, then great, I can swap that out and have Mongo plugged in there as well. Um, so currently, all of these services to talk to each other, quote unquote, talk to each other, uh, they all go into an event broker. Now, at the moment, this is an in-memory event broker. So this is just literally a Go kind of buffer, if you like. And you can register handlers for other events to be fired into. Um, I got put onto this idea of an in-memory event handler, literally written in Go by an engineer I work with. So uh, I've worked with before, so big thanks to him for that. It's a great idea. Uh, and this is all nicely interfaced. So if I ever need to implement Kafka or SQS or whatever else I decide to go with, um, I can just implement that as another, like, implementation of that interface and things will just work right so this is kind of my mvp in terms of engineer service recruiter service and account service is the bare minimum i'll need and maybe a payment service as well um and eventually or probably now as well i will put together a simple version of this i will have an analytic service as well right and now this analytic service the idea is all it would really need to do is just listen for events because analytics is just you know, how many views has a profile had or, um, you know, how, how long did it take for an engineer to reply to a message from a recruiter? That kind of thing, right? All these kind of analytics. 
And all that really needs is to read data, right? That, like there's no real event at the moment I can think of that the analytics service will need to fire off. So that's why it's just down here as a consumer and it's not producing anything, right? It's just going to sit there, listen for events. And for now, it will just write those directly into a Postgres node. Uh, eventually and ideally, obviously, you would have your analytics database away from your kind of application database. Um, but that's fine. So this is kind of the broad overview of the architecture of the product. Um, and I'm sure you're probably interested in a lot of the code. So some of the topics I've just spoke about may sound complicated, but if you want a fun and easy way to learn about them and other core computer science fundamentals, definitely check out brilliant.org. It is the best way to learn these topics that don't cost thousands of dollars or take years of schooling, and it's actually free and easy. So brilliant is probably the best way to learn maths, data science, and computer science interactively. So for example, in the new How Technology Works course, you can explore topics like what actually makes a good password or how recommendation algorithms know what content you like. So to check out everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash samvcodes or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. If I just give you a very quick breakdown of the Go code as well, so this is the monolith here. Um, in this internal package are all of the services, right? So you can think of some of these subdirectories here as your microservices. So the recruiter service is here, you've got the engineer service, you've got the account service. Uh, and as I was saying, each one of these services gets a repository, which is this read writer interface, um, which then means that, you know, I can take out this whole service, have it running in another pod, it's already set up to accept its own database repository. Um, and then again, I've got Postgres all kind of decoupled away from the core of the application here, um, which is fun and nice. Um, yes, yeah, so that, that's kind of the services. And then at the moment, uh, since this is all kind of written within domain-driven design, uh, when you create a profile, for example, you'll notice there's this profile created event and it just enqueues a profile and created event, and then other services can listen for that. So it, currently they're all tied together in this event handler. So you'll see here that this function is called uh, when a event has been fired from the engineer handler service, uh, and you have to register those currently by, uh, where are we? A listener, which is in the router actually at the moment, so you'll see here that the broker just simply listens uh, for events. So it listens and you register your profile created handler. So if I ever need to, you know, plug in Kafka or any of that fun stuff, I could have a, a genuine broker service I write that it speaks to, or I can just plug in that topic, that Kafka topic and connect to it directly from the account service or the register service and just fire off those events, right? Um and then obviously, like I was saying, I've kind of got UI here with HTMX and all that fun stuff. So the actual architecture, in my opinion, or how I've hopefully have tried to design this, is ready to scale up if it ever needs to. Whereas at the moment, it doesn't need to. I can run this all as a monolith, as a single application, and that can sit on a VM until it gets to a point where it does need to scale. And when it does need to scale, I can separate things out and things should work great, right? So I'll quickly show you the UI as well so people are interested in the application. Yeah, so this is kind of the application so far. It's like you can sign up, you can manage your profile, you can import data from GitHub, you can manage your experience, edit your experience. All the UI is HTMX. You've got a dashboard page. Uh, you've also got, if I quickly come up here, you've also got the engineers page, uh, recruiters page, so they can go and find engineers and filter them. Um, and it's pretty fun, right? So you have to remember again, I really enjoy system design. It, this this is overkill potentially for an MVP of a product, but there's no harm in architecting a system in case it needs to scale, right? I'd rather have something architected in a way that it can scale and I can improve things easily than write something in a completely not caring about that kind of stuff, right? And just coupling everything together and then having a real hard time eventually trying to scale an application. So Hopefully this gave you some type of insight into uh, system design in general, maybe an approach you can take to go monoliths and approach you can take to just building quote unquote startups uh, quick and easy. Um, yeah, 